Do you mind if I tell you something? What do you mean, I said. What a weird thing to say, I thought. Well, you might find it distasteful. I don't know. Tell me anyway. I have a strong constitution. I got... I asked the ship to alter me. He looked at me briefly. I inspected him. The slight stoop, the thinness and the paler skin wouldn't have required the services of the ship. He saw me looking, shook his head. No, nothing outside. Inside. Oh, what? Well, I got it to... to give me a set of guts more like the locals. And I had the drug glands taken out. And the, uh... He laughed nervously. The loop system in my balls. I kept walking. I believed him immediately. I couldn't believe the ship had agreed to it, but I believed Linter. I didn't know what to say. So I uh, don't have any choice about going to the toilet every so often, and I had to work on my eyes too. He paused. Now it was my turn to keep looking at my feet, clumping up the steps in my fancy Italian climbing boots. I didn't think I wanted to hear this. Sort of rewired so I, like, so I see like them. A bit fuzzier, sort of less, well, not fewer colours, but more sort of squashed up. Can't see much at night either. Same sort of thing on my ears and nose, but it, well, it almost enhances what you experience, you know? I'm still glad I had it done. Yeah, I nodded, not looking at him. My immune system isn't perfect anymore either. I can get colds and that sort of thing. I didn't get the shape of my dick altered, decided it would pass. Did you know there are considerable variations in genitalia here already? The Bushmen of the Kalahari have a permanent erection, and the women have a tablier Egyptian, a small fold of flesh covering their genitals. He waved one hand. So not that much of a freak. I guess this isn't all that terrible really, is it? I don't know why I thought you might be disgusted or anything. Hmm. I was wondering what had possessed the ship to do all of this to the man. It had agreed to carry out these... I could only think of them as mutilations, and yet it wouldn't accept his terminal. Why had it done this to him? It said it wanted him to change his mind, but it had changed his body instead, pandering to his lunatic desire to become more like the locals. Can't change sex now, even if I wanted to. Things will still regrow if they don't get cut off. Ship can't alter that, not quickly. Takes time, intensive care. And wouldn't alter my, um, clock speed, what do you call it? So I'll still grow old slowly and live longer than them. But I think it might relent later on, when it knows I'm sincere. All I could think of was that by converting Linter's physiology to a design closer to planetary standard, the ship wanted to show the man what a nasty life they led. Perhaps it thought rubbing his nose in the human condition would send the man running back to the manifold delights of the ship, content with his cultural lot at last. You don't mind, do you? Mind? Why should I mind, I said, and instantly felt foolish for sounding like something from a soap opera. Yes, I can see you do, Linter said. You think I'm crazy, don't you? All right. I stopped halfway up a flight of steps, turned to him. I do. I think you're crazy. To... to throw so much away. It's wrong-headed of you. It's stupid. It's as if you're doing it just to annoy people, to test the ship. Are you trying to get it mad at you, or what? Of course not, Smar. He looked hurt. I don't care that much about the ship, but I was worried. I'm concerned about what you might think. He took my free hand in both of his. They felt cold. You're a friend. You matter to me. I don't want to offend anybody, not you, not anybody, but I have to do what feels right. This is very important to me, more important than anything else I've ever done before. I don't want to upset anybody, but... Look, I'm sorry. He let go of my hand. Yeah, I'm sorry too. But it's like mutilation, like infection. Ah, we're the infection, Smar. He turned and sat down on the steps, looking back towards the city and the sea. We're the ones who are different. We're the self-mutilated, the self-mutated. This is the mainstream. We're just like the very smart kids, infants with a brilliant construction kit. They're real because they live the way they have to. We aren't because we live the way we want to. Linter, I said, sitting beside him. This is fucking mental home, the land of the midnight brain. This is the place that gave us mutually assured destruction. They've thrown people into boiling water to cure diseases. They use electroconvulsive therapy. A nation with a law against cruel and unusual punishments electrocutes people to death. Go on, mention the death camps, Linter said, blinking at the blue distance. It was never Eden. It isn't ever going to be, but it might progress. You're turning your back on every advance we've made beyond where they are now, and you're insulting them as well as the culture. Oh, pardon me, he rocked forward on his haunches, hugging himself. The only way they can go and survive is the same way we've come, and you're saying that's all shit. 
that's refugee mentality and they wouldn't think thank you for doing what you're doing they would say you're crazy he shook his head hands in his armpits still staring away maybe they don't have to take the same route maybe they don't need to maybe they don't need mines maybe they don't need more and more technology they might be able to do it by themselves without wars and revolutions even just by understanding by some belief by something more natural than we can understand Naturalness is something they still understand. Naturalness, I said loudly. This lot will tell you anything is natural. They'll tell you greed and hate and jealousy and paranoia and unthinking religious awe and the fear of God and hating anybody who's another colour or thinking or thinks different is natural. Hating blacks or hating whites or hating women or hating men or hating gays. That's natural. Dog eat dog. Looking out for number one. No lame ducks. Shit, they're so convinced about what, what's natural, it's more sophisticated, it's the more sophisticated ones that will tell you suffering and evil are natural and necessary because otherwise you can't have pleasure and goodness. They'll tell you any one of their rotten stupid systems is the natural and the right one, the true way. What's natural to them is whatever they can use to fight their own grimy corner and fuck everybody else. They're no more natural than us, than an ame amoeba is more natural than them just because it's cruder. But smart, they're living according to their instincts, or trying to. We're so proud of living according to our conscious belief that we've lost the idea of shame. And we need that too. We need that even more than they do. What? I shouted. I whirled around, took him by the shoulders and shook him. We should be what? Ashamed of being conscious? Are you crazy? What's wrong with you? How can you say something like that? Just listen. I don't mean they're better. I don't mean we should try to live like them. I mean that we have to have an idea of light and shade that, that we don't have. They're proud, of some, they're proud sometimes too, but they're ashamed as well. They feel all-conquering and powerful, but then they realise how powerless they really are. They know the good in them, but they know the evil in them too. They recognise both. They live with both. We don't have that duality, that balance. And, and can't you see it might be more fulfilling for one individual, me, who has a culture background, who is aware of all life's possibilities, to live in this society, not the culture. So you find this hellhole more fulfilling? Yes, of course I do, because there's... because it's just so... alive. In the end, they're right smart. It doesn't really matter that a lot of what's going on is what we, or even they, might call bad. It's happening. It's there. And that's what matters. That's what makes it worthwhile to be here and to be part of it. I took my hands off his shoulders. No, I don't understand you. Damn it, Linter. You're more alien than they are. At least they have an excuse. God, you're a fucking mythical recent convert, aren't you? The fanatic. The zealot. I'm sorry for you, man. Well... Thank you. He looked to the sky, blinking again. I didn't want you to understand me too quickly, and he made a noise that was not quite a laugh. I don't think you are, are you? Don't give me that pleading look. I shook my head, but I couldn't stay angry with him looking like that. Something subsided in me, and I saw a sort of shy smile steal over, steal over Linter's face. I'm not, he said, going to make this easy for you. You're making a mistake. The biggest you'll ever make in your life. You'd better realise this on your you're on your own. Don't think a few plumbing changes and a new set of bowel bacteria are going to make you any closer to Homo sapiens either. You're a friend, Dizier. I'm glad you're concerned, but I think I know what I'm doing. It was time for me to shake my head again, so I did. Then to held my hand while we walked back down to the bridge and then out of the park. I felt sorry for him because he seemed to have realised his own loneliness. We walked around the city for a while, then went to his apartment for lunch. His place was a modern block, down towards the harbour, not far from the massiveness of the city hall, a bare flat with white walls and little furniture. It hardly looked lived in at all, save for a few late Lowry reproductions and sketches by Holbein. It had clouded over in late morning. I left after lunch. I think he expected me to stay, but I only wanted to get back to the ship. Egyptian. Tab tablia. Tablia Egyptian. Tablia Egyptian. Tablia. Tablia. Egypt. Tablia. Tablia Egyptian. Tablia Egyptian. Tablia Egyptian. Tablia Egyptian. Tablia Egyptian.